select Tyler Kolick, uh, the 6'3 guard out of Marquette, former Big East Player of the Year, uh, standout senior. And they picked him with the 34th pick. They moved up from 38 to 34 and uh, and picked him up. Average 15 and 7. Led the Big East in assists this year. 15 points, 7 assists, 60% true shooting percentage, 38% from three, man. What would you think of the pickup? TJ McCollum. TJ, <laughs> TJ. They, they got TJ. him. They got him. We got him. We got uh, the Knicks fans got their version of TJ. Uh, this kid, obviously, I got to watch him a lot uh, playing against UConn and St. John's. And, you know, obviously the system that they run in Marquette uh, did a really good job with utilizing his bigs, obviously also as well being drafted by the Phoenix Suns. Uh, he, They caught my eye early, mm-hmm. that team, obviously, and then they ranked to the top 10 in the country. But Kolek, man, he's pesky, very smart. He's not going to blow you away with his, with his athleticism. Uh, however, yes, catch and shoot opportunities. He can knock it down. He's a smart play uh, player. He's very heady. I like him a lot, man. This is like this is a diamond in the rough. I don't like to use that term a lot, but he's one of those guys that uh, will get rotation minutes if he's able to play defense the way that Tibbs is looking for him to play defense. He's he's like NBA ready. I really like this guy a lot. This was a pickup that uh, many many liked, and and uh, a lot were hoping they would get after night one was over, uh, because the Knicks do need uh, some playmaking punch off of the bench, and you know it's not clear how much money they're gonna go have to go out there and get a vet. Like, is there a vet that they get on the vet minimum? Is it a, a Lowry, a campaign, someone of that caliber? But to go out there and get a young player. A young, skilled playmaker. Uh, I think that's going to bode well for him. What do you think he's going to need to do? Because we know it, Tibbs' style, typically, especially with the younger players, is to you know kind of start him off situationally. Uh, mm-hmm. McBride was a situational, you know, or, you know, quickly got twenty minutes a, a game when in his rookie year, but even he kind of got his minutes in in certain spots, certain key minutes where he can succeed. What, what do you think Kolick is going to need to do to to get uh, immediate minutes with this rotation next year? Well, I mean, he shot he was forty percent three point shooter. So, I mean, in terms of helping to spread the floor uh, and having a floor general in terms of the tempo, we for the first time in a very long time. Nick fans can be happy about the fact that they have a competent front office, a great coaching staff, and a roster full of defensive-minded players who could also score the ball. So the fact that this young man has to score the basketball won't be necessary. However, it'll be welcome. So considering the fact that JB is obviously the superstar point guard that uh, the Knicks organization has longed for for a while, now you have a guy who's a, a, you know, prototypical glue dude, if you want to say that, glue guy. Um, so, yes, he's going to hit open shots. He's able to make a lot of plays in terms of, you know, running the hammer sets. Remember, the Knicks were running a lot of, like, blind pig action, delay action, uh, things and utilizing their bigs out of uh, that pinch post position. This is a kid who's able to create out of that as well as we're talking about also the turnover percentage is really low. This guy's a really, really solid point guard across the board. He's not, as I said, he's not going to blow you away with his athleticism, but he's going to find guys in open shots. And who's to say that there might be a time in which he's able to be on the floor with a DiVincenzo, with the Bridges, or if OG's able to slip into the three and then they want to put Jew at the four. There's a lot of things that they could do with this guy who could just be the steady, consistent point guard off the bench. And, and Deuce being able to find himself offensively uh, this, this past year uh, could play next to him. There's yeah, no reason yeah. why those two can't got, be in the backcourt as a second unit uh, wholeheartedly. I believe that they could do that. How did you like his defense uh, playing in the Big East, playing at Marquette? I mean, the Big East is, in my opinion, it's the toughest conference in America, both in terms of basketball and just, you know, grittiness. I mean, UConn, St. John's, Marquette, uh, they're slugfest. Providence, you know, you saw Devin Carter. This kid had to guard Devin Carter. Like, this is not mm. – it wasn't a walk in the park for this young man for the entire season last year, and yet they had one of the best turnover ratios in the country. So you're, you're looking at that. And also, you know, Shaka Smart is going to put his guards in positions to be running a pro set and defense that, you know, very much could play 
uh, in his favor if he comes to the system that Tibbs has defensively as well. And, and as we said, now that they have wings, lockdown wings, <laughs> uh, there's a lot that this kid can do in terms of just playing the passing lane, base guarding his man. You know, he could be able to get away with, you know, reaching here and there because he basically has, you know, an iron curtain behind him. So, yeah, I, I think he's going to fit in pretty well. I think that's how he's going to get his minutes. I would say this, though. Mm -hmm. He was a strong two-way player in the Big East. Uh, you know, in, Go, going through screens and things like that, he is a little bit smaller. Um, in size, he's 6'3", but in terms of his frame, he, strong body, he could obviously create his own shot and do things like that offensively. My only thing is we're looking at a guy that's, you know, Austin Reeves, Luke Kennard type, you know, that teams are going to try to test him early just to see how good of a defensive, defensive player he is. Uh, but I'm not worried about it. I think that, as I said, it helps having those guys behind them. And, you know, an on-ball hawk like Deuce, maybe it might be able to help hide him a little bit uh, with what they got going on over there. Well, what do you think as as a – he's older, he's a senior, 23, same age as Deuce. But, you know, yeah. just moving from college to the pros, young point guard with, with the playmaking prowess, what do you think is going to be the biggest adjustment for him to, to keep, maintain that, keep that up? I think oh, the spacing is going to help, you know, the NBA, the pace and the spacing. I mean, the Knicks did a really good job of allowing DiVincenzo to find his rhythm offensively. Obviously, from the perimeter, he went nuts. Deuce made that leap, uh, you know, shooting from the perimeter. And now, as I said, you could honestly have a group of dudes uh, that are 38% three-point shooters and better, you know, surrounding yeah. him. So, yeah. Play safe, play within your system, know your role. You know, we know how Tibbs is in terms of, you know, roles. So if this kid is going to be in a situation in which he just has to be the facilitator, go for it. You know, pass the ball, play some defense, uh, keep the offense in check. As I said, the Knicks do a lot of, you know, delay actions, pistol, blind pick, things like that in which it's, you know, if you have the opportunity to touch the paint, uh, allow the defense to suck in and kick out, you know, take advantage of it, man. They finally have a bunch of shooters that also are lockdown defenders. See, be the franchise. David Zenon on the ones and twos. Tyler Kolick, the next pickup Kolick, man, number 34 pick. Out of Marquette, 23 year old senior, six foot three. Uh, once again, 15 points per game, 7.7 .7 assists, which led the Big East. Here was a, a sound bite. Uh, shout out to Papa Left for this. Here was a sound bite from Kolick on a interview that he did uh, to talk about you know what he brings to the game and and how he wants to contribute uh to to a to an NBA team here he was I feel like a lot of a lot of the stars and and the guys that really love to score the ball love to play with me just cuz I find them in any position and have those conversations of where they like the ball what kind of spots they like the ball in but you know I, I love watching Jalen Brunson, uh, just the way yeah. he does it at his size uh his footwork is is really incredible all right, that that was uh, that was Tyler, man, and he's going to be going up against JB in practice. So, could have a little iron sharpens iron, and and what a way to get into the league and, and get your feet wet with the New York Knicks by having to guard Jalen Brunson every day. You better strap up, young man. That's a, yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no better player to learn how to uh, be able to touch the paint, play off two feet than Jalen Brunson right now. You know, this is this is the guy to kind of shore up that backup point guard uh, spot and not put enough pressure on him that he has to score the ball in those situations. I mean, and honestly, if we're, we're being, you know, pretty transparent, the guards uh, for the Knicks that were able to score a lot of these open shots, we're talking about slot cuts, you know, getting open opportunities in which the defense has to rotate. They have an opportunity to actually have some fluidity with that offense in the second unit. Yes, sir. Just because of the fact that tempo can change now and – you know, of course, the first unit having Julius is coming back, you know, OG, you know, figuring out uh, which way he's going to uh, fit Mikel. I mean, they, they have a lot of pieces that could really, really make this offense click. So, yeah, I, I really like it a lot. And also, Josh Hart being the offensive rebounder that he is, we're going to have a lot of opportunities for kickouts. This kid is a great catch and shoot, uh, three point shooter. From the top of the key we're talking about 35 to 40 percent from the top of the key that's where a lot of those kickouts are going to go to so i think i think it's a good fit 
Yeah, I like it, man. And to me, of these picks, he's, he's the most likely to get playing time and battle for a rotation spot. And he's got that chip on his shoulder like everybody else, like Jalen and Josh and DiVincenzo. He's going to fit right into the culture because he's another guy who feels like he's been overlooked every step of the way. So he's going to be playing with that chip on his shoulder, man. And, you know, a plug-and-play ready kid, 23 years old, senior, which is what I wanted the Knicks to, to look for, especially in these later rounds. Someone who can come in, is smart, and can contribute right away. They found a the guy, it seems mm-hmm. like. I like, yeah, and I think you also, the journey to get here, his development every year, he's gotten so much better. Remember, he, did, he wasn't, he didn't start at Marquette. He right. originally started his career at George Mason. George Mason, yeah. So, you know, Atlantic 10 basketball, obviously the system was a little bit different, you know, with the tempo uh, that that conference plays in. But then when you get to the Big East, you got dogs every night. As I said, it's not a cakewalk. So for him, playing in a smaller, um, you know, court in which this, you know, it's not as spread, it's not the opportunity to score or as often, for him to be able to average 15 at the high percentage that he did shooting-wise and the assist numbers were pretty good, yeah, I think he's going to fit pretty well. One of the I was I was reading a scouting report on him and they talked about uh, his wingspan. A lack of wingspan could be an issue for him. We we saw with DiVincenzo as hot as he was from three, uh, scoring at the rim was also trouble for him as well. What do you think mm-hmm. about that with guards? Is that a potential reason why he was drafted low so low? You know, being a second round pick is is that a legit concern? Not for me. I mean, I don't think it's a big issue to be honest with you. I think if we're going to be pretty transparent <laughs> the way the NBA is nowadays. I mean, JJ Redick had a negative wingspan. He was a pretty, he was a pretty decent yeah. player in this league. Desmond you know, Bain. we're not looking for, we're not looking for a superstar, you know, you're yeah. looking for a guy that's able to shore up the second unit and the nights that, you know, JB is coming back from an injury. He, you know, may need some time in order to get into the rhythm. I doubt it, but I'm just saying, you never know. There might be an instance in which we need a guy to just, you know, steady the ship this kid can do it. Uh, the negative wingspan thing, I don't really buy into that too much. I mean, finishing around the rim, that's also, you know, offensive opportunities. You know, it also depends on the center situation that mm-hmm. the Knicks have going into the season. That's a big thing. You know, the type of screens that they have, the system that they may uh, have with o- OG and Mikel playing next to each other, or OG and Hart, you know, being on the court at the same time. The, the rebounding opportunities, the transition opportunities, the paint touches, the rim running. I mean, there are a lot of factors that go into that. So I'm not necessarily looking for him to finish amongst the trees. I just need the kid to be able to pass the ball and, you know, pass the cheese to whoever is hot. But yeah. I think he could do that. And also playing with Jalen Brunson, playing off of two feet is now, you know, the it thing in the NBA. He could learn a thing or two from him. Why not? Yeah, no, no question about it, man. I'm, I'm excited about this pick, and hopefully he makes it to Vegas, and we'll, we'll take a look at him there. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP the Franchise, David Zenon is in the building, man. Call us up, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on a KFTV Discord, man. Lots to discuss. 